You're watching the News on 6, 10 o'clock update. Green Country's most watched 10 o'clock news. The settling of the American West is one of the grandest stories of history and one of the saddest. For the native tribes that lost their culture, nothing can compensate. Each is haunted by a legacy of suffering and pain. For the Nez Perce Indians of the Pacific Northwest, that included a deadly exile to Oklahoma, which keeps them even today from answering a plea to come home again. That's the story Oklahoma traveler Scott Thompson begins tonight. Our people call that the hot place. A lot of our people died back there. Anybody who has spent time in prison, or no people who have spent time in prison, know what our entire band was back there. A lot of our people died, not only of uh, the, the diseases, but I don't know if any of you ever been homesick. Hard to believe that went on, and yet I know it did. In the country they called the hot place, beneath the plains of Kay County lies the evidence of all the pain the human heart is capable of inflicting, of the suspicion, bigotry, and hate it can hold. On May the 22nd, 1885, before boarding... And in the person of Lucille McWilliams, of the love and tolerance it can muster. This speaks of a lot of uh, suffering, doesn't it? Oh, my, it, yes. You can't tell by looking at Absolutely it. Absolutely not. She is not a Nez Perce Indian, but as she walks through the burial place where so many of the tribe rests so far from home, Lucille finds it easy to side with them. But they all had a reason to fight. They had to fight to preserve themselves. They didn't want to fight. The Nez Perce lived peacefully for centuries in the stunning valleys of Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. Without their friendship and support, Lewis and Clark might have starved as they crossed that country in the snowy spring of 1806. Despite treaties that promised the tribe this land in perpetuity, white settlement forced the Nez Perce to reservations. One chief, Joseph, refused to sign any treaty or move his followers to a reservation. His father, old Joseph, who lies buried beside a highway today, warned his son what was coming. A few years more and white men will be all around you. They have their eyes on this land. My son, never forget my dying words. This country holds your father's body. Never sell the bones of your father and mother. So the young Joseph fled with his band eastward, the army in pursuit for three months, over 1,100 miles. Nez Perce bravery and military tactics made headlines around the world. But in the end, cold and starving, 40 miles from the Canadian border, 48 hours from freedom, Joseph surrendered his people. I am tired of fighting. Our chiefs are killed. The old men are all dead. The little children are freezing to death. My heart, My heart is sick, is and, sick sad. and sad from where the sun now then I will fight no more forever. In her 85th year of life, those words still stir Lucille McWilliams. She knew she wanted them on this marker outside Tonkawa. Why is that? What touches you? Well, I just can't, I can't just think of people here hurting each other like that. Just because you're black or white or red, you know better in God's eyes. Lucille and her late husband, Dave, were behind the effort to remember the miserable eight-year exile the Nez Perce endured in Indian Territory. After I got this up in the history, and I wanted to get the cemetery back for him, too. Lucille, what is it, uh, how does it make you feel every time you come here? Well, it, it makes me feel good, because I know I did something that they approved of. And it, uh, when you stop and think about your own people, and how, in a conflict like this, they'd be neglected, that somebody took an interest in them. The only reason the Nez Perce are still remembered on their former reservation is because Lucille demanded it. Farmers had been plowing this plot for decades. They hauled off the rocks that marked the graves 
and tossed them in the Salt Fork of the Arkansas. And then Lucille found this document at the county courthouse under the signature of the president, Grover Cleveland, proof that this little half acre had always belonged to the United States and the Nez Perce. And no, the farmer wasn't happy about it. The fellow, when he called me up <laughs> on the telephone, told me, oh, Betty, like me, should take care of my own business and leave his farm alone. His farm was a graveyard. That held the remains of a broken tribe, killed by heat and cold and malaria. Every child born to the tribe here died here. More than a hundred of them. When a child dies, it seems so sad they didn't have a chance to have a life. And they shouldn't suffer the indignity of resting beneath a wheat field or a milo patch. Their lives had already been filled with too many indignities. For recognizing that, Lucille was made an honorary Nez Perce and given a name. My name is Mahmaya Snemkitsniwat. That means guardian of the children. We had no children. I had a, child, a daughter from a previous marriage, and uh, we wanted children so badly, and especially he wanted a boy. And we never did have And then when I think that they had these children and couldn't take care of them, I wouldn't, it must have been terrible for them to go through what a suffering to see their children dying when if they could go back home and they'd live. Today, when the ancestors of those who did survive, who did make it back to the Valley of the Winding Waters, get together to celebrate, they also pause to remember those they left behind in another country with other spirits, broken, sick, and sad. And going to Oklahoma, I hear stories about that hot place, the suffering, the children especially. Some of them that were born there never got to see this beautiful land here. Never got to eat the beautiful foods that we have, the sacred foods that we have. They never got to eat these huckleberries that's in the mountains, or the good roots, or the beautiful fish that we have here in this country, or the big deer and the elk. And we got to see them, even got to taste them. And they died there. But a century later, Lucille is here to watch over them. And she hopes they over her. Those are a lot of children you're a guardian of. <laughs> yes, it does. Well, I hope you're all looking at me and praying for me. <laughs> And if there are spirits indeed hovering nearby, Lucille is hopeful she's eased their burden, hopeful they are finally at peace. Oh, I'm sure they are. They, I, they didn't hurt anybody. You know, just being alive would seem to aggravate somebody. And maybe the good Lord took them so they didn't have to suffer. And maybe that's why he sent Lucille the guardian of the children. In Tonkawa, Scott Thompson, the Oklahoma Traveler. Oklahoma Traveler Scott Thompson takes us on a journey tonight to the Valley of the Winding Waters. The land had always given bountifully to the Nez Perce Indians. The air was pure, the timber strong and straight, and the animals and plants were many. So too have been the claims on this land and the sorrow that has washed over it. But now in eastern Oregon, something's afoot. Tonight, Scott listens as the wind whispers come home again. For 1,200 years, this land knew only one people. They called themselves Nimipu. They answered only to the seasons. The mountains and the headwaters were life-giving. Fish and game, wild roots, and then strangers came upon them. They opened up their arms, they opened up their country. 
and said, live amongst us. The whites that came in and moved in here says, you guys are not using this land the way you're supposed to be using it. You guys get out and we'll take over. Their world was Oregon's Wallawa River Valley. It gave the Nez Perce Indians life itself. To lose it broke their spirit. It broke their hearts. Lose land, lose your religion, lose your custom traditions. It's hard to regain all that. Our people were devastated. Homecoming ride to the Wallawa Valley. A monumental day doesn't always begin with great fanfare. The salve that is supposed to soothe a wound that gapes across a century and more doesn't have much of a sting. Rather, it's gentle and resolute. These young Nez Perce men, when they mount their horses and ride today, will trample injustice underfoot and lift spirits that have lingered here, destitute and pitiful. Try not to ride side by side. Give yourself lots of room. We got lots of time to do this. Once, Nez Perce Braves wouldn't have needed instruction on how to ride, but it's a white man's world now, has been ever since settlers overran this valley and took it. Today, on 160 acres, the Nez Perce take it back. For the first time in 121 years, the Nez Perce returned to ancient tribal land. The effort to get them here has been building for almost a decade battling bigotry and prejudice and hatred that blights almost two centuries. It's been a fight fronted by ordinary folk. Maybe we'll get over and stop down this evening. Jim Franey at the antique store. Your enemy is an enemy as long as you don't know him personally. Betty Conrad's Wallawa town treasurer. We gotta keep going. We can't backtrack now. It means too much. It's part of our religion. And Taz Connor, Nez Perce, Vietnam vet, whose work for the Forest Service kept him in the valley. I have said before, we have, if, if we are going to enjoy a comeback, a, re, a return to this land, it has to be done hand in hand. With the people whose ancestors pushed the Nez Perce out, the pioneer families are remembered out front of the county courthouse. <laughs> You're doing fine. Like Gary Fletcher's people, he works as a newspaper photographer. Gary's great-grandparents established the family tie here. Now it's residents like him who will make or break any effort to reunite the valley. That's the goal, is, is for both cultures to do this hand in hand. And I think it probably is a threat to some people like me. This is farm and ranch country, beautifully rugged and unforgiving, parched in the rain shadow of the Cascades. The rivers are still life-giving, spewing across great fields of wheat and barley and rye. Wondrous patchworks of gold and green race to the horizon. And there are cattle and cowboys. How about a round of applause for the hard-working wheel horses here? Silverdale, Washington, by way of... They rule the day at the end of the highway in Joseph. The town and the yearly rodeo, both named for the legendary Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce. As is the weekend celebration, filled with parading beauty queens atop prancing stallions. Ladies and gentlemen, the Eagle Staffs that are going by are the sovereign signal for the Indian nation. Please rise, drop your hat, and go by. Though the Nez Perce have always been given a place in the Chief Joseph Day's parade, the tacit reality is they haven't been welcomed the rest of the year. But at about the same time the local economy began to sour, farm prices dropped, a lumber mill closed, some attitudes in the county began to change. Folks like Betty Conrad decided it was time to mend fences with the Nez Perce to hang together rather than apart. How badly were those fences broken? I mean, what kind of work have you had to do to mend them? Was there, is there still a lot of mistrust? Uh... Yes, there is. Uh, people, the white people as well as the Native American have to work together. And I don't know, I, you feel the undercurrents. Uh, the white people have the thing that can we, trust the Indians come back and not take our land from us. Taz Connor remembers the day he was asked to lend his name and energies to the effort, which he did. And I wanted to laugh at that because 
In 1877, they booted us out of here, made, made a big ado about booting us out of here and uh, having us come back to help them with their economic failures was really ironic. <laughs> This is ground zero for a hopeful experiment in reconciliation. It doesn't look like much, but to the Nez Perce, it is sacred ceremonial ground. To whites, it was just another far corner of a working ranch. Cobbling together a collection of state grant money and private donations, a coalition of ordinary folks, people like Betty and Jim and Taz, bought it. The plans they have for it hang in a downtown building. They'd like to see a place where the Nez Perce culture is celebrated and remembered, an interpretive center, a cultural campground and heritage park, and a celebration ground for events like this one. All of it overseen by the Indians. And though Nez Perce, like Maynard Wilson and his daughter Aliyah, have come back for this historic weekend, hoping it's a first step towards mending. My daughter may see it in her lifetime. Hopefully she will. Um, hopefully I'll still be around. <laughs> Others keep their distance. The spirits of our people is gathered all around us. And they're enjoying this as much as we are. Nez Perce elder Horace Axdale is spending the weekend up the highway at Chief Joseph Days. So are a great many others. They have been visitors too long in a place that once was theirs. And they question anyone who offers back even a sliver of their sacred land. He'll never give it back. We know that. In order to be home, be home to us, we have to have it all back. All of it. Not just a bit here and a bit there. We've got to have it all. Then it be home. And Priscilla Craig stays away because she thinks she and her tribe are only being used as props for tourists. To me, I think it's more of a show down there. We've always been steadfast in one thing, that this is not something that's a moneymaker for this area. History never forgets. And the history of this land, at once so stunning and majestic, is stained with tears and broken promises, broken dreams, a broken tribe. None of them caused the other's pain. Those demons are long dead but they continue to bedevil those left in their wake. Hey, we had nothing to do with that. Let's forget it. Let's go on from here. I mean, we're trying to make amends for something we didn't do. There's so much injustices that we need just a small degree of justice to bring us back. Bring us back in mind, spirit, and hopefully body back to this country. Old grudges are for old men. It's the small ones who will prosper or suffer by the hand being extended here, who will decide justice and live with its consequences. The small ones always must. This will never end. This is the teaching of our age, is to hang on, hold on, and say this is what you will continue to do when you feel it from your heart. May their hearts be full and feeling. In Mulawa County, Oregon, Scott Thompson, the Oklahoma Traveler. Upon meeting the trailblazing team of Lewis and Clark, the Nez Perce Indians honored them with a wonderful feast. And the friendship feast has continued to be an important part of the Nez Perce culture. Even during the time that many tribe members were exiled to Indian territory, in present-day Kay County. Oklahoma Traveler Scott Thompson says it's just such a friendship feast which, around which a modern-day invitation is wrapped, an invitation to come home again. The main course arrives in the bed of a pickup truck. Bounty taken from the mountains of Oregon's Wallowa Valley, the ancestral home of the Nez Perce Indians. The valley they are being invited back to more than 120 years after they were forced out at the barrel of an army rifle, forced to endure a deadly exile to Oklahoma. 
started with one deer and probably two salmon, and we've worked up to about uh, a buffalo, two elk, 40 salmon. So that's a gauge of how we've grown. For eight years now, that's the folk of Wallawa have been getting together over a dinner table. I'm removing the back strap of the elk, which is also considered uh, the tenderloin. They've tried to bring healing to a wounded place. The idea is that this will be served at the elders' table. Almost 200 years ago, this meal was prepared in reverse when the Nez Perce entertained their first white visitors, Lewis and Clark. Today, it's the ancestors of the people those explorers ushered in who take on the task, who hope mistrust can melt away, even temporarily, over a perfect cut of meat. It takes a lot of time. It takes time. Um, people have to heal, and they go through a process, and um, I think that people have to be patient. Today, we honor our ancestors, the ground that we dance on, the ground that we walk on. Down the road, beneath a parachuted arbor the townsfolk put on, the Nez Perce who came back to dance this weekend came back to history. They're on ancestral land for the first time since 1877, welcomed here by the coalition of valley residents who purchased this land so they might, in turn, give it back to the Nez Perce. For a museum, perhaps, a cultural center, certainly for a celebration ground for gatherings like this. And Alan Pinkham, a Nez Perce whose grandfather was exiled to Oklahoma, had to come back and face some demons. It's like coming to a place and a piece of your flesh is torn from your body. That's the emotional reaction I get. Thank you for this year. Something and is I don't torn. Want any of you to you know, miss the opportunity You've got to, to replace it with something. Drive. You have to remember this place as it used to be and look beyond the campers and the portable toilets and the snow cone stands down there. You have to remember 150, 500, 700, 1,000 years ago and more when this was the summer campground for the Nez Perce people. It stretched for miles here along the Wallawa Mountains and along the Wallawa River there behind the trees. You have to think of the way it used to be. That's the way the descendants of the Nez Perce people remember it. And why coming here for so many of them is like coming home again. This place was, it was taken away from us illegally, illegally. And yet Tess Connor is one of those Nez Perce working to bring the tribe back to the valley. He's willing to trust the whites and their motives, though history tells him not to. The Russians will never forget Napoleon. The Jews will not forget Hitler. And we're not going to forget the United States government for what they did to us. Yeah. Looks like it might be good enough to eat. The taste of togetherness should be savored. The dancers are cleared away and the tables brought in, along with the pans of elk and buffalo and salmon on the grill, tended by Joe McCormick, a descendant of old Chief Joseph and the only Nez Perce living today in the valley his people once claimed, the only one, which is why his joining the coalition was so important. And after I got to meet people here, uh, I began to uh, uh, trust them in, the, in their idea that this is really uh, an okay thing. What are we, uh... The pies and the cakes and the potato salads are coming from every direction now. No invitation other than an appetite necessary. No one turned away. People can just bring a dish and just show up. That's your campground. You need to come over and get ready to uh, start eating. If you've shared table space with a fella, the thinking is you can probably stand him well enough to talk about long years of slights and insults, perceived and otherwise. Each of us, after all, is pretty much like the other. I feel like I want to be a part of the healing, and this is such a part of the healing of the land and the, and the healing of a friction between cultures. I would love for the lemonade. And for just an afternoon, understanding and togetherness seem perfectly seasoned and well mixed. Fate gave them a shared, sorrowful past. Maybe it's fate that set these tables 
home cooking, and a home place all have some claim to. Feels comfortable. Uh, feels warm and comfortable here. Uh, relaxed. We Native Americans feel about Mother Earth. Nez Perce elder Tessie Williams knows the feeling. The spirits are dining alongside. She is sure of it. All around us, they gather and rejoice with us. You can feel it, and it, it's wonderful. <laughs> Those spirits, long filled with misery, are due an afternoon of peace. For when the dishes are cleared away, each of them must still live with the other. And in so doing, resolve just how long history must hurt so. We are two people now because each one has been telling their own history. So if we come together sometime and we talk and understand each other's history, then we become one people. In Wallawa, Oregon, Scott Thompson, the Oklahoma Traveler.